Hello, I'm Askar Shalif and these are the latest updates from Kazakhstan. Activists of the movement Leave Housing to People continue picketing the offices of Temir Bank in Almaty, this time avoiding symbolic job-breaking and detentions. Protesters read out their petition and expressed dissatisfaction with the current situation. This was already the second rally against the auction of mortgage property, which was followed by the arrest of an activist and independent journalist Ainur Kurmanov. On April 30, 2010, around 40 activists of the movement Leave Housing to People picketed the Almaty offices of Timmerbank. Protesters spoke against the auction of the mortgage property, as well as the arrest of the journalist and public figure Ainur Kurmanov. Almost all members of our movement have their apartments put up for auction starting April 30th. That is why we have gathered here. We want the bank to find a compromise instead of threatening us. Apart from the petition to the bankers, the protesters read out a demand to release the jailed Ainur Kurmanov, signed by the members of the movement as well as representatives of 15 international NGOs, and even their European MP Joe Higgins. The letter was sent to the office of the city council and the prosecutor's general. They are deliberately getting rid of all our male members by intimidating our chairman, detaining Ainur Kurmanov for 15 days, attempting to arrest the chair's deputy. So far they never touched our women, but we are ready to bear all administrative administrative responsibilities. We have nothing to be afraid of. The bank administration was unsuccessful in their attempt to turn the picket into a dialogue with an initiative group. Luckily, the tension subsided after the statement of the Temer Bank's deputy board chair. I can officially tell you that there will be no auctions today. We will require a written request, says it is a procedural formality. The parties agreed to set up a meeting between the activists of the movement Leave Housing to People and the bank administration on May 4th. Nevertheless, bankers once again emphasized that they will solve problems with each debtor individually. Representatives of political parties and NGOs from all across Kazakhstan plan to submit their demands to the government during the May Day demonstration in Almaty. Meanwhile, local authorities do everything in their power to prevent the gathering of the opposition. This is how the police are trying to drive me out of my apartment. Police have cut electricity and phone lines in the apartment of Karaganda activist of the vanguard of Red Youth Andrei Tsukanov. Since Thursday evening, officers stand by his door in an attempt to prevent Tsukanov from attending the demonstration in Almaty on May 1st. I hope that our authorities will not prevent pensioners from traveling to Almaty. Activists of the unregistered party Alga distribute train tickets since morning. Unfortunately, not everyone will go, as the local authorities exert pressure on those willing to go to the rally. I received a call from Shahan's village head, who told me to come to talk to him. According to the plan, 11 people should have traveled to Almaty from Karaganda region. Only four boarded the train. I could not go because my family members were threatened by being dismissed from their jobs. Andrei Tsukanov was also not able to attend the rally because he was detained upon leaving his apartment for damaging public property. Unsurprisingly, Tsukanov was relieved after the train has left for Almaty. I asked them to issue me summons as supposed to be done by the law, but they refused. <laughs> Police officers did not comment on their actions. Nevertheless, activists believe that despite the pressure, no less than 1,000 people will gather for the demonstration in Almaty on May 1st. In the light of all the latest information, it is not really surprising that Kazakhstan ended up at the bottom of the freedom of press ranking. According to the recent Freedom House report, the country is all the way down to 168th among the 195 states. Last year, Kazakhstan was ranked 170th, but the insignificant improvement doesn't prevent NGOs' representatives from constantly talking about the visible deterioration of the situation with the freedom of press. In the new International Freedom of Speech rating, published by Freedom House, Kazakhstan assumed 168th place out of 195 countries. Censorship restrictions and prohibitions to cover burning issues are now commonplace for Kazakhstan. These are expected results as our laws are getting progressively unfair. The entire international community appealed to our authorities not to enact the law on the Internet regulation in its current form, but they still passed it. 
In response, MP Igor Solovyova says that she receives both pro-government and opposition information, which means that freedom of speech does exist in the country. According to Solovyova, the pluralism of opinions is particularly evident on the Internet forums, where people are not restricted in expressing their opinions. Perhaps there should be a scale to measure the freedom of speech, as it would be wrong to say that there is no freedom of speech at all in our country. Galima Giliul of the activist of the Kaznat Freedom Movement says that dozens of websites are blocked systematically in Kazakhstan. Therefore, activists are producing special videos for those who want to read banned sites, explaining how to bypass technical censorship. Intentionally or not, the authorities' actions hinder the development of the society and the growth of the intellectual resources of the country. Currently, the activists of the Kaznat Freedom Movement are preparing for a major campaign to put public pressure on officials. In their turn, members of the parliament promise to assist on lifting bans on the access to livejournal.com and online version of the newspaper Respublika. Human rights activists versus the police. The leader of the public association Arruhak Bahadjan Torigojana filed a lawsuit against the officers of the Almala district of Almaty. On March 16th, she was detained in the office of the association for organizing an unsanctioned rally near the monument to Mahatma Gandhi. Bahajan Tarigozhna, the leader of the Student Human Rights Fund Arruhak, sues the Almaty police for their unlawful actions. The activist was detained in her office for organizing a rally next to the Mahatma Gandhi movement five days after the event. First of all, according to the law, they should have arrested me on the 11th, and not five days later. Secondly, they say that I was not detained but arrested. The action to find a spiritual leader of the nation in the vein of Gandhi was held on March 11th and involved Aruhak members talking to strangers, asking them to identify possible candidates. Interestingly, the police officers who monitored the event did not recognize it as a legal right away and detained Tarigozhna only on March 16th. The police even charged her with an administrative violation for the failure to appear in court, appointed a day earlier. Later, the civic activist was brought to the Almaty Administrative Court, where she was fined $300 for organization of an unsanctioned Rally. We attempted to locate here at the place of residence. On March 12th, I called to tell that I have initiated an action, but she refused to meet and asked me not to bother her. Tarigozhna's attorney Denis Alibekov asked the deputy prosecutor of the Almola district court why his client was detained so late after the supposed violation, but has never received a proper answer. Tarigozhna was arrested for not appearing in court according to the summons. I do not remember when exactly the summons was issued. The Internal Affairs Department officers considered the lawsuit groundless. After listening to the arguments of the parties, the judge ordered the defendant to ensure the attendance of the missing police officers before postponing the hearing until May 11th.